there are so many uh, great and beautiful songs for Good Friday. Um, it was tough to choose only two uh, for this video. Uh, luckily, a few of the songs that we would normally do on Good Friday uh, we've done in other videos. Uh, so if you want to see O oh, Sacred Head Surrounded and Were You There, uh, you can watch the Palm Sunday video if you haven't already. Um, and then we're going to have a, a Stations of the Cross with Deacon Dave uh, video put up and also um, a, a musical passion, uh, musical reflection on the passion with even more music. So I hope that, that you have a prayerful and uh, blessed Good Friday today. To, uh, for this video, I would like to talk about the first reading from Mass, which is from Isaiah, and also the song, My Song is Love Unknown. Uh, it's a song that we Catholics know a little bit less. Uh, it was written by a 17th century Puritan minister which I admit doesn't make it sound very appealing, um, but it looks at Jesus' passion and death in a very personal way. Um, it, it, very, it involves us in the passion uh, very much. The first verse says, My song is love unknown. My Savior's love for me, love to the loveless shown that they might lovely be. Oh, who am I that for my sake my Lord should take frail flesh and die. It's very uh, personal. That idea of love unknown, of love to the loveless. Uh, it reminds me of, in the first reading, uh, Isaiah says, It was our infirmities he bore, our sufferings he endured, while we thought of him as stricken, as one smitten by God, and afflicted. See, because if you're loveless, it means you can't see as God sees. Because God is love, as we learned yesterday at the, at, in Holy Thursday, as we discussed. Uh, being loveless. And yet there was something about Jesus that made the crowds follow him and shout Hosanna, all glory, Lord, and honor. Just before that, when he enters into Jerusalem, um, not long before, but it quickly changes. And in the next verse of the song it says, Then crucify is all their breath, and for his death, they thirst and cry. They were loveless, content to spurn him. And in Isaiah's reading, he's, he's prophesying about the Messiah to come. He says, he, he continues, He was one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Imagine holding God himself in no esteem. But it goes a step further because they don't just reject Jesus, they also uh, prefer Barabbas, who's a criminal. In the song, it says, A murderer they save, the prince of life they slay. In different gospels, Barabbas is called a murderer or a revolutionary. But in, other, in any case, he's, he's, a, he's someone who destroys, who creates problems. Um, a murderer they save. It, it's interesting to be the save, savior of a murderer when Jesus is the true savior of murderers and of everyone. By his death, uh, he's, he, he's the prince of life. A murderer, they say, the prince of life, they, they slay. In Isaiah, it says, He shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The song says, Never was love, dear king, never was grief like thine. The greater the love, and God is love, the greater the grief. The more grief that he feels for us and for our sins, and the more grief that he had to endure. Um, and it, it works for us too, because the more that we're open to being able to love, and not to be loveless, the more that we may have to suffer because of that. Yet the, the suffering comes with a great reward. Isaiah finally goes on, Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked. There's a lot of opposites in this, in, in Jesus' passion and death, and in Jesus' whole life. He says, blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit, and um, the first shall be last. So let's sing, my song is love unknown.
I'm grateful, we're grateful to have my wife, Megan, here to, to sing and also play. Like I said before, the irony of it all. And in the, in the song, This is my friend in whose sweet praise I all my days could gladly spend. We're simultaneously Jesus' friend and his betrayer, just like Peter, one of his closest disciples who denies him three times. Saving a murderer, counting God himself in no esteem, betrayal by someone loveless, Judas, with a kiss, a sign of love, supposedly. When he's betrayed, Jesus says, whom are you looking for? And it's again ironic because that's a question, that's a type of question he, asked, he asks throughout the Gospels for potential disciples. What are you looking for? Whom are you looking for? What do you seek? They say, Jesus the Nazarene. And in John's Gospel he says, I am. Twice, two different times. It harkens back to uh, the story of Moses with the burning bush when he asks, who it is that's speaking to him out of the burning bush, and he says, I am who am. The God who is, they destroy. In the second reading, St. Paul says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace. And so that's why in our next song we, we confidently approach and we say, to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I Am, I will sing.